if businesses did become involved in education, but in education from the point of view of what I've just been talking about, skills development and capability, you're helping people to question, to reason. Now, actually, that's a dangerous thing to do because once you start to do that, you start to question and and and, and evaluate the policies that are coming out and the actions that are coming out. But, but so in other words, uh, but I think that being the case, then what you're doing is um, if you have people who work in, in your organisation who can't think, no, that's not right, no, take that back. It's not that who can't think, but who would benefit from having their skills of critical reasoning and questioning and dialogue uh, sharpened, then it means that the huge richness of insight that is outside of the organisation is coming in filtered through this these significant capabilities. So that becomes then to the benefit of the, the, the people who work in the organisation. Actually, it feeds into the business, doesn't it? Because then what you've got are capable people who are scanning, scanning your environment. They are absolutely alive to threats and possibilities. And if they are absolutely alive to the threats and possibilities in a very sophisticated and informed way, why is that not good for your business? So, so yes, I think I think I think there would be a real benefit both to the business as a you know a collective entity, and it 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 would certainly be advantageous to people because in fact again th this is what I want to try and do with the smart work company is is it's really about you know giving people capability so it, it it means then that if you've got people who have postgraduate level thinking and social skills because it's about social skills as, as well it's about how you engage with your peers it's about how you engage with stakeholders it's about how you engage with customers it's about how you have a conversation in the dialogue you know if if you then as a business, undertake to be concerned with these capabilities, then you have a really red hot workforce. Now, if you then say, well, as many technology companies, I used to be a, a computer programmer, for example, in my, my you know long past years, and the argument against training us was that we would leave. Well, you know, do, do you want us as programmers semi-literate or do you want us for the time that we're here to be red hot, in which case you pay for our training? Uh, and yeah, you know, in a year or two years, we might move off to somewhere else. So if we leave taking our capabilities with us, we also leave taking the goodwill um, of the business who have helped to develop our capabilities. And I think in this connected world, staying in touch with people who used to be part of your company and who are now elsewhere, they still are your ambassadors. If they've had a good experience of working with you, they move on to another uh, opportunity. They then become, remain part of your alumni, if you like. You know, if you go to university and you leave university, you're still part of that alumni. Why can't you be part of, you know, the, the, the company alumni so that when they move on, they're your ambassadors. They tell a good story about you. Um, and, and I think, I think, so it's a good question, Thierry, that I hadn't thought about before. I, I can see benefits. I, I don't think many will go for it. I don't know. I hope they do because otherwise I don't have business. <laughs>